Good morning, church. Welcome to our Sunday service this morning. My name is Pius Musioki and my wife here is... Eunice Musioki and we are from Kaka Ministry. In case you are visiting this morning, we are the Nairobi Christian Church. 
part of the International Churches of Christ and feel at home and much welcome. Before we proceed, I would like my wife to read a psalm for us. I will read from first one, Psalms 150, and I read, Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heaven, praise him for his act of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and ring, praise him with the tablet and dance, and dancing, praise him with the string and flute, praise him with the class of symbols, praise him with the resounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible is encouraging us that we need to praise God with everything that we have, and because we have, uh, we are alive and we have the breath. Let us praise God this morning. Indeed, it's true that uh, the psalmist is calling us here high to use everything that we have in order that we may praise the living God. I know that uh, God has given us our voices, God has given us different instruments that we can be able to praise him with. It is time now for us to be able to use them to the glory and honor of his name. Before we proceed, let us go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for this moment that you have given us, O oh Father. I know that uh, being alive this morning is not something that, Father, we can be able to take for granted. We pray that even, Father, as we prepare our hearts to be able to listen to the different messages that, uh, Lord, you've placed ahead of us, that indeed you'll be able to inspire us with the Holy Spirit. Help us, O oh Father, to be able to learn from you, and indeed, above all else, to be able to put all the things that we'll be able to learn into practice. Yeah. We want to commit the messages of the day before your able arms, O oh God. We pray that, Father, you'll be able to inspire them, that indeed you'll be able to make them speak the very words that you want us to be able to listen to this morning. Be with us at the, as we begin our service. Be with us at the middle, of Father. And even as we end, O oh Father, we pray that we'll be able to end in a powerful way. Thank you so much, Lord, for everything. We pray all these things in, uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Up next, we want to let uh, the song leaders to be able to lead us into the next phase. Welcome. Good morning, church. Welcome to our service today as we worship the Lord.
Bwana nimeona mkono wako for such an encouraging worship. We are encouraged. Up next is the communion message. And uh, to lead us in, uh, uh, in this session of the communion are the Kiforos. The Kiforos are a couple that loves God deeply. And uh, they have four beautiful children. So welcome. Before we listen to the message of the close, let us listen to this song. Amen.
Good morning, church. Uh, my names are Douglas Kiforo, and uh, with me here is my lovely wife, Karo Kiforo, uh, from the Kaka Ministry. We are privileged this morning to share the message of the cross. And as we do this, uh, I request my wife to read uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 54 to 62. Then I read, Then the seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some, th and when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard, and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also a one, of, one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another hazard. Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the roster clawed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the roster crossed today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Amen. Amen. So from uh, the passage that uh, we've just read, this is a time when uh, our Lord Jesus Christ uh, was going through one of those tough moments that uh, no human being could ever bear. And at this time, uh, normally, when you're in trouble, mm. you always would wish that uh, your close friends will be with you. Mm. Uh, I remember when I was studying the Bible, uh, a question was posed to me. And I was asked, if in life you'll ever come to a point where you really need a friend to stand with you in troubles, mm. then your friend actually denies you. Mm. How would you feel? And I remember quickly saying, I would feel so bad. Mm. Uh, when you look at uh, what is happening here, many would want to quickly uh, maybe judge Peter for not being uh, that... Uh, loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. When I look at this, one of the things that struck my mind is the Bible actually records Peter followed Jesus, but his following was at a distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as, as we live our lives as Christians, uh, one of the things I would uh, pray that we all be very careful about is uh, when we are following Jesus, yes, but following him at a distance. Mm. When you are not very keen, you will actually find that uh, still you feel like you are a disciple. But your, 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 your commitment to Jesus is what we we'll call a distant commitment. Mm. And uh, that's one of the things I would really request as we move on with our lives, we are very careful. Mm. Looking at what happened here, there are three things that uh, I look at and they, they actually they keep me, uh, you know, thinking. One, it's a girl who noticed uh, Peter was sitting with some other guys around a fire to warm themselves. Mm -hmm. So this means it was actually cold. What was going through these men plus Peter now who had joined them was so far away from what Jesus was actually facing. Mm -hmm. For Jesus, I don't think that cold was a concern for him. In life, we are faced with different things. One is the challenges that will actually, can actually make us uh, leave what we really need to focus more on. For these guys at that time, it was about warming themselves. For Jesus, it was about his life. Peter joined them, and joining them, he actually forgot the focus was the Lord Jesus Christ. We are told three, three guys uh, confronted Peter. The fa first, we are told, it's the, the girl, then there's another man. Then an hour later, another one came and said, surely you are with them. And it strikes my mind looking at the answer that, the third answer that came from Peter. 
uh, when he said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. I mean, this guy is talking about the Lord whom you've been following. He is here and you actually need to identify yourself with him. And Peter is saying, actually don't. It's not about being asked, do you know Jesus? He's saying, I do not know what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not about, do you know Jesus? He's saying, what you are talking about is actually a foreign language to me. Mm -hmm. So looking at every step in this statement, the first thing is, one of the things that can make me and you uh, find ourselves walking, I mean, following Jesus at a distance, is the first one that I talked about, wanting to feel warm, wanting to feel comfortable in our lives today. Two is about the challenges. I mean, these guys, they are warming themselves because of the cold. And you know, we are faced with the challenges in life that can actually make us focus on, you know, wanting to deal with our problems more than wanting to find our steps with Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, when you look at also, uh, looking at uh, the, the, the last answer that came to Peter, when he says, I do not know what you are talking about. In life, as a Christian, it can get to a point whereby uh, what concerns the Lord sounds like foreign to us. Mm -hmm. When, for example, you can actually uh, be so comfortable in life, I mean, do, I mean, live your life to the point that those that, the things that should make you actually be in step with the Lord are sounding like foreign to you. Someone can come and remind you of something. It's obvious to you that you mm -hmm. have to be uh, in, in tune with mm -hmm. and you forget. So mm -hmm. as we do this, Let's remember to keep in step with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Let my wife share uh, something, then I will conclude by praying. Just to add on what my husband has said, mm -hmm. sisters, there are so many things might distract us. Mm -hmm. For example, when it comes to our businesses, our kids, mm -hmm. our jobs, even our own husbands, when those are married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I can encourage sisters is just to focus on God. Every time, every hour, every day, when you feel you are not connected, just continue focusing on God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, one thing that we should not also forget is that uh, even through all this that Jesus was going through, He still chose you and I. He did not give up. And uh, we need to understand that the love of Jesus, regardless of whatever uh, hardships that He was facing. Mm -hmm. He still chose me and you. Mm -hmm. So will you choose him mm -hmm. or will you continue uh, following Jesus? Yes, but at a distance. Mm -hmm. Will you be with him in step with him or will you continue following Jesus at a distance? Mm -hmm. So uh, at this point, I'll pray. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, after the prayer, I'll encourage us as we take the the, 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 the fruit of the wine that represents the blood that Jesus shed on the cross mm -hmm. and the bread that represents his body. Remember mm -hmm. to think about your own life. Mm -hmm. We also get a chance of giving and our givings, uh, has, the details are on the screen. Mm -hmm. So let's give cheerfully from our hearts. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for reminding us that dear Father, that uh, in our lives there are many things that can distract us from following you mm. uh, closely. There are so many things, God, that can make us follow you, yes, but at a distance. How I pray that God will be reminded. Father, you remind us any time when we are, you know, going astray, that you will call us back to you, Father. Help mm. us, Father, to keep on, uh, you know, working hard to remain close with you. Yes. I pray that God, even whichever situations or circumstances in our lives that us uh, brought us to that point of us not being close with you. Mm. You remind us of how we need to work out things to remain uh, with you, Father. Mm. Lead us in everything. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amazing
Followers for such an encouraging message that we need to follow Jesus closely, not from a distance. Up next is the main message, and uh, the person to lead us in the main message is none other than our own brother, Shandrak Monda. Shandrak Monda uh, leads the Kaka ministry together with his wife, Mary Nyasinga. And uh, he is this brother who is ever smiling and, uh, you know, full of encouragement. And I believe that this morning, even as we listen to today's message, he will uh, be able to encourage all of us in a powerful way. So welcome. But before we listen to the message, let us start and praise God with one song. Amen. Amen. Yes, 
Good morning, church. Welcome to our Sunday service. It's a privilege to be able to meet together, though virtually, and be able to share from God's Word. Today, I have a privilege to be able to share the sermon of the day. And so, I want to welcome you way in advance. Um, thank you so much, uh, the Musiokis, for that uh, powerful introduction. And thank you for Thank you, thank you for us for guiding us through um, the Holy Communion message. We truly appreciate. Now, today, brothers and sisters, we'd like to talk about more than just belief. More than just belief. Uh, in the book of John, chapter 8, from verses 31 to 32. But I'd like to start from uh, 21 so that we can understand what was going on. Once more, Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come? But he continued. You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you will die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed, indeed die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you. But he who sent me is reliable, and what I have heard from him I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me, he has not left the he has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. In verses 31, to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful morning that God you've made. We thank you for the privilege to be alive and uh, in good health. And even Father, have the strength and the ability to come before you with such confidence, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, to be able to worship you by praising your name, by hearing from your word. And we thank you, Lord God, so far, what you've been able to speak to our hearts this morning. And now, Lord God Almighty, I pray that uh, the message that, Father, you put in my heart I want, to, I want to pray for your Holy Spirit to be able to guide me and lead me, Father, with clarity of words. And even, Father God Almighty, to lead me, Father, in a manner that you desire so that, Father, your name will be exalted as your word goes out to the hearts and minds of our brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, God. We pray the Lord, may your holy name be glorified. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, this is uh, Jesus and uh, just this passage that um, we've been able to read. <clears throat> and we see him talking to a group of Jews. Uh, there are those who are not, uh, who are not really uh, getting what he was talking about. And uh, they were not, um, uh, as a result, they were not putting their faith in him. But uh, towards the end uh, there in um, actually... In verses 30, it says, even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. And you will realize that these are the same, same Jews now. Um, he starts uh, from verse 31 saying to the Jews who had believed in him, uh, Jesus said, if you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Um, where did uh, I find this uh, title in my message? More than just believe. So when you think about it, is, uh, you see the 
disciples, I mean uh, the Jews, um, you know, argued who Jesus is, or who Jesus was. And so what he claimed to be, kind of, uh, they didn't uh, get along well with that. And so now, um, though there were those who were opposed, still there are those who believed and put their faith in him. I wanted to uh, understand what does belief mean. Belief, uh, what I found is it means acceptance that something exists or is true, especially one without proof. And the second point is, the second part is uh, trust. Uh, belief is trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something. Now, the, to the Jews who had believed in Jesus Christ, Jesus never leave, leave, it, leave it at that point. He actually comes and says, if you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. These were the audience, those who had already believed in him, in his sharing. And um, he tells them, if you hold on to my teaching, it's kind of, you know, isn't faith enough? Isn't just, you know, trusting someone enough? But Jesus um, adds something right there. If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. What uh, the version I'm reading is NIV. But now when I was looking at this in the NLT version, it says, Jesus said in his own words, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Now, all of us have come to believe in Jesus at some point early in our lives, but we quite didn't understand what that meant. We believed Jesus is the Son of God, but we really didn't know, and that he came to seek and save that which was lost. We, we, we kind of reached there, but we didn't know much about what it actually means on a deeper note. And um, myself, I'm part of those. <laughs> I grew up and uh, in a family where we used to go to SDA, and uh, I'm one of those who are privileged also to hear about uh, baby Jesus, and uh, there are those Sabbath, you know, uh, uh, songs that we we used to, to to sing, just reminding us that you know what Jesus Christ, baby Jesus, is uh, is is the Son of God, but I came to understand. Um, the depth of this faith later in my, uh, in, my, in, my in my years later as a, uh, a grown young man and uh, around my 20s and that's when now uh, Jesus called me and I was able to go through uh, his word. I had the privilege to be taken through his word by his servants and I'm glad that I made the decision uh, to make Jesus Christ Lord of my life. And since then, my brothers and sisters and our friends who are listening to this message this morning, it has never been the same again. I have lived enjoying my relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, then, as a young man, a single um, person, and later now as a married um, uh, man and as well as a parent, a father. And so I've come to... Uh, notice uh, or realize that uh, faith is more than just uh, words. It's more than just saying, I believe. Um, it goes more to say, I need to hold on to what I believe and I need to leave it out. Which now, that is um, the point that Jesus is putting across here. Yes, you believe in me as your Savior, as Lord, but uh, you need to do more, and that is you need to obey what I teach or what I command. And all the teaching about Jesus, of course, we have them here in the Bible. And, that, and so the Bible needs to be very close to our hearts. The Bible needs to be, um, you know, uh, our encouragement on a daily basis. Our faith will be built based on how much we are in God's word. In John chapter 15, from verse 9, the Bible says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. 
Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remained in his love. So you see, Jesus is actually telling us who, those whom he has called to follow him, that for us to be able to remain in him, we've got to obey his commands. Just as he has remained in his father because he obeys God's commands. And so in John 3, the Bible says that God loved the world and he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Wow. This is eternal life, that we have the knowledge of the Son of God. We get to know who Jesus Christ is and the mission for which he came to here on earth to seek and save the lost. You and I are part of those that uh, Jesus has sought, and now we are in God's kingdom. We truly appreciate but uh, we continue trusting in God because the journey of Christianity does not just end at baptism. We continue, um, you know, uh, striving to live out the life that um, Jesus has called us to. And in this, he says, when we remain in him, there's no way we are going to, 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 to bear more, much fruit if we are not going to remain in turn. One of the greatest fruit here is the fruit of love. You know, that is the same, same uh, love that has called you and I to God's kingdom. God loved us when we were still sinners. And you see, he called us to be able now to live a life worthy of his calling. Now, uh, you realize the disciples, uh, the, first, the early disciples, in uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 16, uh, it takes us through uh, the names of those who were called first by Jesus Christ. These men were fishers of fish, but Jesus now comes and calls them to himself. And what is the, what is the message? He is telling them, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. These guys never knew what that was, but the Bible tells us that they left what they were doing and they followed Jesus immediately. This study on discipleship, this scripture actually gets to capture it on when we are doing a discipleship study with our friends. And one of the questions that we usually ask is, if you were put yourself in the shoe of Peter, you know, John, James, Andrew, and Jesus here comes and calls, and calls for you to follow him, what will have been your response? And we all have stories to tell. You know, once I'll ask, who are you? And where do you want me to go? Or maybe he'll say, you know, no, you know what? I had some, uh, some uh, you know, uh, you know, there are people waiting for this because I need to sell this and, you know, maybe have some money to, you know, to buy food and ABCD. But we don't see that stories with these early disciples, you know, them, they left everything and immediately they followed. So it was an immediate, um, um, you know, response. When I was thinking about that, I realized that they, the disciples, trusted Jesus when he called him. When he called them, he, they actually trusted him. And not just trusted, but they acted on that trust. They, they followed him. They left everything they were doing and followed Jesus. Why? Because they trusted his calling. Now, Jesus is our standard even today. You and I have been called, and we have been called, and we have put our faith in him who has called us. The question is, are we being obedient to the call every day? That is the question. Are we now being more obedient to the calling that which you and I received? Uh, in verses 31, again, we notice that uh, he said something right there. In verse 31 of the book of John 8, and he says, in verse 32, then you will know the truth, 
and the truth will set you free. Part B of verse 31 says, if you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. You see, um, holding on Jesus' word is applying it, keeping it, never allowing it to get away from you. And you will get to know the truth. And that truth now will set you free. And the word of God over the years has set us free from so many things. Set us free from sin. Not to, do, not to be set free to do what you want or what you wish. No, but to please God for who he is and for what he wants us to be. His freedom allows you and I to make the right choice. His freedom allows you and I to keep following and focusing on him who has called us. At any given point, we are tempted to want to focus elsewhere. We need to come back to the right focus and know that, you know what? We are the cult and we need to live out our calling. And uh, Jesus' desire is that you and I will live out this particular purpose. You realize now in verse 28, in chapter 28 from verse uh, 18, he sends his disciples out to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And not just that, but keeping on teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded us. Remember, he wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the saving faith by getting into his word and get to learn about him in his word on a daily basis. You need to be committed, my brothers and sisters. We need a commitment towards our relationship with Jesus. And if I may ask this morning, how are you committed to trusting and obeying Jesus today? How is it, how has it been with you in this 2021? Now we are into the third month of uh, uh, this uh, year, 2021. How are you doing in the area of just trusting the Son of God? How, how, how are you, you know, doing in the area of obeying what God is teaching us each and every single day? Are you learning something? You know, are you making right choices to be able to follow? I have a friend called Rogers. Rogers is a, a friend that uh, was reached out to by Liz Maleko, a very young, uh, our youngest uh, sister in Kaka. And, uh, you know, he's one of her colleagues uh, out, out there in Masai Mara. And uh, there's this issue that, um, uh, you know, he was in or he has. And uh, so he needed how, you know, uh, how it can, he can be helped. And so Liz gets to know about it. And for him, he needed prayers. But Liz said, <laughs> I got into her, she felt like he needed more uh, knowledge about uh, this idea of just, you know, prayers and even learning more and get to know God on a personal note. And so she promised him that uh, she'll be able to uh, share with her, uh, with him, uh, you know, how he can actually find help. At the end of it all, we were able to get to know each other and we started uh, studying the Bible, actually started with seeking, Lord, seeking the Lord, um, seeking God's study, and then now we did what he studied, and that's where we are at. But one thing that I'm happy about with this uh, guy is that um, he's very genuine. You can actually feel the genuineness, you know, the honest, the sincerity is open. And I can't, I, I, you know, I can't just fail him, you know, I just need to be available for him so that um, we can be able to even get to know each other more and be able to build uh, our friendship even based on um, uh, just, you know, the word of God. And uh, he's a family man as well. And so there's much that we will be uh, uh, talking and just getting to know each other. So far, so good. We've had a fantastic time, and we keep on looking forward to the next meeting. Now, what it, it reminded me, why I'm sharing about this is, 
you know, you know, just wanting to see God, the desire to want to know God as a person, you know. And even it reminded me of the mission. Actually, this is the mission <laughs> that you and I are in. This is the mission that Jesus Christ left for you and for myself so that we can be able to, you know, you know, uh, you know, reach out to this, you know, to the lost world and just be able to, you know, uh, support one another, share our faith and be able to share God's word and he will be able to save the world from, you know, uh, from darkness. Now, you and I, we need to live a certain way for us to be able to do this. We've got to ensure that we are, you know, um, we, we, we are actually making every effort to be able to live out this life that uh, we have been called to. And uh, we need commitment, therefore. We need commitment because for every, uh, you know, everything to work out, you know, we have to, you know, make every effort to ensure that we are uh, doing what is right in the eyes of God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, in verses 1, <clears throat> We have been doing the book of Ephesians uh, in the last couple of uh, weeks, and this has been our book for the midweek services. Now, in chapter 4, verse 1, Ephesians, the Bible says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. <clears throat> this is Paul writing to the Ephesians from the Roman prison and is actually encouraging <clears throat> the Ephesians to be able to make their, you know, to, to, to live out a life that is worthy of the calling they had received. Have you ever imagined that you are called yourself? You know, sometimes this calling, sometimes we think it's just for the few. You know, uh, you know, you are you are a teacher, you know, and uh, you are you know this is a calling. You're a doctor. This is a calling. But in the kingdom of God, all of us have been called, and we need to live this life, you know, in a manner that is worthy. In the eyes of God, God has chosen you and has chosen me to be able to be His representatives here on earth, and therefore we need to reflect you know, him in every way. The way we live our lives, with our friends, with our neighbors, wherever we are, with our family members, we need to reflect this Jesus and they need to see the Jesus in us by the way we talk to them, by the way we relate with them, by the way we handle issues. You know, it needs to be clear that Jesus Christ is truly reigning in our lives. You see, Paul is saying, I urge you, I beg you, you know, to be able to live in a manner worthy of the gospel, in a manner worthy of the calling you have received. In which case, this calling is not ours. It never originated from us, but there is him who has called you and I, and so that's why we need to reflect him in Every way, we in, uh, in Romans chapter twenty, in chapter eight, verse twenty-eight and nine, Bible says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. For those God for new, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. We need to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus. And so that's why we need to work hard to live out our lives, to live out our faith in Christ in such a manner that people will be able to see the son of God, Jesus Christ, that now he has had an impact in your life and in my life, and it's actually evident before everyone that Jesus is at work. God works to fulfill his purpose in incredible ways. He works 
to bring himself glory in our lives. And he has done so much for us, brothers and sisters. And so we need to ask ourselves, how are we living our lives amongst believers or even unbelievers? People are watching uh, your life, are watching my life. We need to be able to be aware that we are in the world. And so we need to be able to live our lives in such a way to reflect who Jesus is, who has called us according to his purpose, so that his name will continue being glorified. And this also will reflect in the ways that we live among ourselves. Remember, we are a body of Christ. And so we need to be able, we need to relate with one another based on love and understanding because there are times that we may differ because we have, you know, different uh, differences, which, is, which are, again, unique, uh, you know, uh, in the kingdom of God. And so we've got to agree, uh, you know, to, 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 to see how we can be able to bring um, glory to God's name through those differences so that God's church, the body of Christ, can remain intact and continue growing and being edified as a result. So, my brothers and sisters, it's my uh, prayer that uh, we are not going to leave our faith and say we are just at the believing level, but that we will allow ourselves to be able to even learn more and be able to put our faith into practice by living out this calling that which you've received. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for listening. God bless you all. Let us go to God in prayer. Sovereign God, thank you so much for the privilege to share from your word this morning. And thank you so much, Lord God, for the lesson that you learned. Uh, that, Father, our faith alone is not in our Father, but we need to be able to, you know, uh, put what we believe in into practice. We need to apply our faith on our daily life uh, endeavors. We thank you so much, God, for everyone who was able to log in for this service. And thank you so much, God, for everyone who's been able to share. We pray that King of all glory, may your name be exalted. We love you and thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.